All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So XRP is sitting at 47 cents right now, down 7.89% on the week. Not doing too much for the day. Bitcoin's sitting at $26,720. In this video, I'm going to talk about every single market crash that has taken place all the way back until 2000, not 2000, 1957 in relation to the unemployment rate when we see the unemployment rate spike up. And right before the spike takes place, I've marked on the chart for the stock market showing you guys while a crash is happening, what that looks like and where we are now in relation to this unemployment rate currently sitting at 3.8% and when the next spike will take place, how that will affect Bitcoin, how that will affect XRP. Also, I'm going to be uh, comparing to what I talked about yesterday. We have some breaking news in the space. We're talking about what would cause unemployment to spike. Um, some other data as well, too, that you guys need to know about these markets, the sentiment, and then also talking about a head and shoulders pattern to look for. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed. Comment 777 if you're feeling bullish. And if you're going to become the first millionaire in your family tree, as always, tap the like button, tap the subscribe button to confirm it, and let's run it. All right, so when we look at the inflation data coming out for September, sitting at 3.7%, the exact same as August, inflation hasn't changed regardless of the Federal Reserve's move to pause on interest rates. So when we look right here, since August at 5.33, still sitting at 5.33%, the next meeting's coming up in under, I mean, it's a little over two weeks, under 20 days, and they're most likely going to pause again. Then we'll see how that affects inflation because the Fed has to cool down right now and, and stop raising rates. Otherwise, they risk another bank run, which would be detrimental for the economy. And so they're walking on thin ice right now and looking at the unemployment rate right here, sitting at 3.8 percent. Well, let's compare back and let's dive right into the charts and let's show you guys what's happened each time, every single time. There's no debate. This has happened all the way back until 1957. So all the way back here, I could even go back to when this 1948 and show you guys this stuff too. But I think this stuff is really interesting to look at. So the last time that unemployment spiked was in February. Contrary to what most people think, you know, COVID happened in March, but it actually started before March. Right here, February, unemployment was 3.5%. And then going into March, it rose to 4.4. And then by April, it was at 14.7%. So in February of 2020 at 3.5%, where were we on the S&P 500? Well, we were right here at the end of February. You know, we were at 3,369. And we dropped 36% by March, the end of March. And then by the time it peaked out, the market started reversing. And so let's look at the time before then. And let's talk about what was happening because 58%. And this was during the uh, 2007 to 2009 market crash for the subprime mortgage crash. So if I were to refresh this page right here and look at each of these, I find this stuff very interesting. So going right here, well, let's mark on the chart where that was. So I marked on April of 2008. And so November, March, April right here. So we were going up from like 2007 slowly, but the unemployment didn't rapidly start rising until after April. It was at 5%, then it went 5.4, 5.6, 5.8, and it just went up from there. And so I'm not counting when it went up and went down and up and down and up and down. I'm counting when it just kept going up, right? So April 2008, we were in the middle of the crash. We were seeing a dead cat bounce right here, and then we saw it fall off a shelf over 58%. The time before then for the uh, 2000 dot com bubble boom was during the middle of the crash right here. And so we saw the market start, uh, the unemployment go up while the market was coming down. So this shock is what causes, and it's not the root cause, but it is one of the big reasons why the market starts to crumble. The time before then was in 1990, a 20% crash. The time before then, 28%. It was in the midst of the crash, 50%. And back in 1973, was in the midst of the crash. 36% in 1969, in the middle of the crash. 22%, right when the market started to roll around, 22% back in 1957. So every single time, back until 1957, and then if I go back um, before then as well too, I'm sure there would be the same thing showing up. And so right now where we are is we're in this, we're in this gray area where you know we're seeing this, this bounce take place. Could this be 
the dead cat bounce that is similar to what we saw right around here for 2008. And the reason why it's a much bigger bounce is because there's simply more debt and there's more money in these markets right now. So instead of just a tiny little, little rally right here, followed by another drop from this, we're seeing a bigger rally and a potential bigger drop because the drop after that was 52%. So right now, what have we seen so far? I mean, we saw this crash take place 2022 is 27%. So we've only seen a 27% crash. So are we on the horizon of a much bigger crash? And how will that affect crypto? Because if I put XRP's and Bitcoin's chart next to the S&P 500, well, crypto has only been around for one of these massive unemployment spikes right here. And that was for COVID. You know, you go all the way back to 2008 to 2009. Well, Bitcoin and XRP weren't really and known for anything at that time. And so the chart starting right here, the only crash that we can take into account is COVID. And so it's one for one right now. So the real question is, is will this next unemployment spike cause a crash in crypto? Is that what the black swan event is? Because I feel that there's a black swan event coming. And what would that be? Would that be World War III? Would that be them closing down the United States for you know war talks i think that that's the most likely case scenario now no guarantees there again not financial advice but you just have to be ready for something like that so when we look at the bitcoin price chart right here in terms of where we are on this macro market cycle and when i get into the uh the micro and looking at the day to day we're on the three-day candles right now comparing back on the rsi we're sitting at 45 on the rsi we can compare back to here in october of 2015 where we saw Bitcoin rally out from this period um, right before the uh, the halving for Bitcoin. And then once the halving took place, we saw a correction for Bitcoin, then the massive bull run rally. And then 2019, you know, a lot of people are comparing to something like this, where we see a rally take place followed by a black swan event, and then it just struggled to break out of here. So what will happen? What is the most likely case scenario? And then for XRP, looking at XRP's price chart as well, too, on the macro, you know, we see the symmetrical triangle that it's still in and the resistance for XRP to the upside. Well, that's the high of July. Simultaneously, that was the, the high of March right here, where we saw XRP fall off the shelf during the crash of 2022 with FTX, Terra Luna, Celsius, Voyager, all of those companies going bankrupt and then rallying out of here as you know the markets just formed the bottom with Bitcoin and then started to come back up. So the resistance for XRP is roughly between 90 cents to a dollar and then this downward trending resistance right here. Whereas the support is this upward trending support. If we see a break of this upward trending support right here and a black swan event, that could bring XRP all the way back down, you know, 30 cents to 34 cents. Now, um, if we break below then, I would expect that to be bought up quick. I wouldn't expect XRP to dip anywhere below that. If XRP were to dip anywhere below that and come back down here to the level of post lawsuit, um, when the lawsuit was filed in December of 2020, down to like 19 or 20 cents, then I believe that would be ultimate shakeout event. And I, I would expect XRP to break out of there. And I would personally scoop up. So if XRP comes down to 30 cents, I'm buying more. If it comes down to 20 cents, I'm buying more because there's too many partnerships for this project to go away. The only reason why that would happen would be black swan events, would be unemployment spiking, would be a crash in the S&P 500, you know, another 20, 30, 40, 50%. That would, in my opinion, I could be wrong here, that would affect crypto. That would also affect precious metals in the short term. Nothing would be really that safe other than maybe bonds or treasuries or the dollar temporarily because Warren Buffett in my video yesterday, if you guys didn't watch this video, subscribe to the channel. I show not only what's happening on the XRP price chart for the RSI and where we are in the most likely case scenario, but I talked about what Warren Buffett was doing sitting on billions of dollars, more money than... Can, you can imagine in terms of what he sat on in the past of cash. He's just sitting on a pile of cash and he's getting ready to buy the dip. So even though the SEC lawsuit is still far from being over and potential black swan events uh, happening with World War III, Ripple continues reaching new markets around the world with a particular focus on Dubai and the MENA region. In a recent post on Twitter's X, UAE native firm Sologenic shared its latest report highlighting that Ripple's efforts to attract institutional investors in Dubai is strengthening, with Sologenic boasting 
and they're onboarding over 200,000 customers onto the XRP ledger. In May, Ripple opened a new office in Dubai's International Financial Center, and Brad Garlinghouse stated during the Dubai FinTech Summit that the XRP ledger now has over 4.8 million wallets, with 20% of the clients coming from the uh, MENA region. And so Ripple continues to expand. So regardless of whatever happens in the price, it's noise. It's just noise right now. So holding, I would be holding, I'm going to be holding through a black swan event and then I'll be buying more. So ultimately focus on the front end, obviously stay right by God and just get ready for massive price appreciation as we back up the truck. Again, no guarantees, not financial advice, don't buy or sell anything. But what are the factors that could cause unemployment to spike? If we asked ChatGBT this, let's just see what AI tells us. So unemployment can be due to a variety of factors. And number one would be cyclical unemployment factors of recession and economic downturns, where a slowdown in economic activity can lead to reduced consumer spending, which can prompt businesses to cut back on production and lay off workers. Now, one of the key things to look at in terms of a recession indicator is the 10 year to three year rate. I talked about this yesterday, an inverted yield curve. And this just means that, you know, the, the three month or the two year yields a higher percentage on the bonds than a 10 year or a longer term. So shorter term, you know, bonds and treasuries are yielding a higher percentage than longer term where people are expecting a recession. Investors are expecting a recession. So the last time we went inverted was back in 2006, 2007, the time before then 2000, and then before then 1989. And so each time that that happened, the inversion is not what signaled the recession. It was when we went from being inverted to in the positive and roughly it's about 13 months. So we're about a few months away from a potential recession. Uh, if we go back into the positive or if we bobble around, maybe it's a little longer, we'll see, but it's on the horizon. Tighter monetary policy where central banks raise interest rates to combat inflation or stabilize the currency, which can lead to reduced borrowing, investing, and consequently unemployment. Now, it's not when the Fed starts raising rates that we go into a recession. It's when they start cutting rates because we go back here and we see they paused in 2006, then they started cutting in 2007. Now the crash on the S&P 500, if you look back here, the crash didn't really happen until 2007 and 2008. You saw this dead cat bounce in May of 2008, then by the time we reached the bottom, it was 2009. So if we look at the effective federal funds rate right here, well, we didn't reach um, the bottom for rates until when, 2009. So while the Fed was cutting rates, that's when the market was crashing. So they paused in 2006, and then they started cutting in 2007. So we look right here at the S&P 500, the pause happened all the way back here right? The markets rallied a little bit further to the upside. So there is the potential that we see the S&P 500 break out, break the all-time high and make another high, but then ultimately come crashing down on the other side leading into 2026. And then that's where we see the big dip, like 1929, 1930, 31. And then the next decade, it takes us a long time to break out of this right here as we waddle around, then break new highs leading up to like 2050 in the stock market. If we're, if the stock market's still around and all these companies haven't transitioned to blockchain and cryptocurrency, and you know, this isn't the end of the stock market, if we keep going or the world hasn't been nuked yet in the, in the, the land of the earth hasn't been scorched by what's going on right now through nukes. Okay. But I feel like something like this is on the horizon. So regardless of whether we push higher or the highs already in for the stock market, I do feel something big is going to happen. Now, a lot of people are like, I'll believe it when I see it and they don't prepare. So I'm very logic, like I'm logic based and I, I look at the scenarios of if this, then that. So let's play a hypothetical here, okay? If the top is already in and we're going lower, then what are you doing to prepare? right? Are you doing anything? Or are you just sitting back watching Netflix and not preparing, not having cash on the sidelines? Um, are you all invested in stocks? Are you all invested in crypto right now or real estate? And you're just going to write out that dip. What are you doing for that? Well, if the top isn't in, we rally a little bit further, then we see a crash. Well, are you going to buy into the stock market right now in hopes to get another 10 or 20% rally with the risk associated with a crash on the other side? That's why the investor sentiment 
is another thing to look at. Consumer confidence. If consumers believe the economic failure or the future is bleak that leads to a failure, they may cut back on spending leading to reduce uh, production and layoffs. Now, when we look right here, the investor sentiment consumer confidence index is a key indicator to look at. And what this means is anything above 100 signals a boost in consumer confidence towards the future economic situation as a consequence of which they are less prone to save and more inclined to spend money on major purchases in the next 12 months, values below 100 indicate a pessimistic attitude towards future developments in the economy, possibly resulting in a tendency to save money and consume less. Where are we are right now? Well, we're below, we're between 98 and 99, meaning that consumer confidence is low. It's below 100, so people are more inclined to save money, spend less, and that's why we see the markets taking a dip right now. That's why crypto is struggling. So another indicator is tighter monetary policy, right? So when we see the effective federal funds rate raising, then what does that mean for the Fed? Well, that means that the Fed is tightening. And so when you see the Fed's balance sheet since 2022, they've been tightening down. The rally in Bitcoin was caused by this right here in March of 2023, March 8th to March 22nd, the Fed went from 8.3 to 8.7. So they erased months of QT, quantitative tightening, to issue money printing. So let's look at what happened on the charts from March 8th to March 20th with Bitcoin. So we go right here. We go look at March 8th. Well, interesting enough, Bitcoin was at $19,400. So we saw the shocks in the banks take place. Bitcoin crashed in the short term. And then the Fed stepped in. They bought up the bad bonds. They bought up the bad debt. Bitcoin's price rallied to $30,000, then ultimately $31,000 from $19,000. So what does that mean? Well, that means when the Fed tightens, the markets bleed out, money comes out of the market, they get squeezed like a sponge. Then when the Fed eases, they have to put money into the market, quantitative easing, and then they're adding liquidity to the sponge. And then that goes into crypto, that goes into the stock market. So March 8th to March 22nd on the S&P 500, well, what did that look like? If we go ahead and we zoom in right here for you guys on the chart, March 8th, where was March 8th? Right about, right about here, the S&P 500, was it 3,800? It rallied over 20%, nothing too crazy. By March March 22nd, it was up 8%. So we saw a rally in the S&P 500 as well too. And so what we're seeing right now is lagging liquidity into the markets from you know the Fed's easing. And also you know fiscal policy, reduction in government spending or increases in taxes can lead to decreased demand in the economy and subsequent unemployment. So reduction in government spending. Well, that's tough knowing that the gross debt is going to grow from 33 trillion to 50 trillion, but the debt ceiling, they keep having to have these debates on and trying to cut back in areas and um, not spend as much, which is tough for them to do when Jerome Powell wants to just go burr on the money printer. And so then structural unemployment factors or other reasons, technological changes, automation, AI, other technological advancements can replace human jobs. That's what's happening, but they're also creating new jobs. Globalization, you look at the globalists and what they're trying to do with their Green New Deal, trying to connect the world, CBDCs, central banking digital currencies, new world order, that stuff is coming. Mismatch of skills, the skills workers have might not match the employers are looking for, a decline of certain industries, geomatic mismatch, rigid labor markets, job searching, temporary mismatches, seasonal unemployment, natural disasters. We've been seeing how many fires have you guys seen? You know, what? look at what happened in Maui, whether they're naturally caused, naturally caused, or they are direct energy weapons, war and conflicts, health pandemics. All this stuff seems to be happening right now, right? Is this a coincidence that health pandemics, war and conflicts, natural disasters, tighter monetary policy, fiscal policy issues, consumer confidence is down, potential recession happening with the inverted yield curve. This is just telling us this as it is, guys. I mean, this doesn't take rocket scientists here. So I'm not here to talk all about the, the negative right here and show you facts, right? I'm here to show you facts, but it's hard when someone says, why are you being so negative? I'm not being negative, I'm just sh I'm showing you the truth. So I like showing you the truth and being transparent what's actually going on because look at the crypto fear and greed index right now, we're at 45. Does that mean that you should feel this? No, that just means this is what most people feel. So when I look at this stuff, I'm completely indifferent. World War III happens, God bless everyone, but 
big deal, man. You know, big deal. We're all going to heaven at some point, so it doesn't matter. We're just here to do right by God and have fun in the process and bring people closer to God. And the more money that you make, you can do awesome stuff with that. And this stuff right here, emotionally indifferent, right? Money does not rule my world. I look at that, I'm like, money's a tool to help you do more, to help more people. And when you look right here on the max scale in terms of the crypto fear and greed index, too many people get too emotionally wrapped up into this stuff. And so if we see another black swan event, World War III, we see another pandemic, we see something happen, unemployment spikes, you lose your job, good. Better that you better that you lose your job so you can become an entrepreneur and get your freedom, right? Because job is glorified slavery. You look at what they did to the slaves in the past. Well, the slaves worked for free, but they got free housing. Now you work for pay, but you have to pay for your housing. You have to pay for your food. Whereas the slaves got free food. They got free housing. They worked for free. So what's the difference? The only difference is you're just getting some money to pay your bills, but you can barely pay your bills. You have too much month at the end of the money and you wonder why you're broke because they redefined slavery. They just redefined it and they made it seem like you're not a slave, but yet you are a slave because your birth certificate means when your mother goes into labor, she's going into work to birth you into this planet and you have a certificate. That's why you're, uh, you're called a corpse when you die because your body through your birth certificate is a corporation where they own you and they make money from you the, your whole entire life through a job that you work. You know, that's why you go to school Monday through Friday. That's why you go to work Monday through Friday. It's a work week. You have set weekends off. They're programming you, all right? So you've been programmed your whole life. You obviously understand this. I don't have to insult your intelligence here. This is common sense. Everybody agrees. Virtually nobody's disagree. The only people that disagree are the people that'll like see two plus two and they'll be like, no, that's not four, that's 12 because I don't agree with you because I don't like the way you look. Like those are the types of people we're dealing with here, kind of cuckoo trains, right? But when you look at the facts, the facts line up. Now, interestingly enough, when we look at Bitcoin, we also have to look at chart patterns, not just fundamental news as well too. And one big chart pattern is head and shoulders patterns where you see a shoulder, a head, a shoulder, and a neckline. So what we're looking at in the chart right here in the micro, let's look at this. And also we see deviation as well too on the RSI. So we see a high right here on the RSI of 74, and we also see Bitcoin simultaneously rally up for the left shoulder, but we saw a lower high right here. Then we see that Bitcoin correct come down. Then we see a higher high, but on the RSI, we see a lower high. So while we're seeing number one, right? High, higher high right here, higher high right here for the left shoulder, higher high right here, we saw a peak on the RSI, lower high, lower high. So a deviation, what does a deviation mean? Well, it means that the markets are losing steam right here on the price because the RSI is going down. Very similarly enough, if you look at the all-time high for Bitcoin, well, the high for Bitcoin was not actually the all-time high. The high for Bitcoin was right here on the RSI, relative strength index, because we saw a higher high for Bitcoin right here um, and a higher high right here, whereas we saw a lower high on the RSI as Bitcoin was trading down. It was losing steam. Also, we saw a head and shoulders pattern right here as well too, where you see left shoulder right here. We can see the uh, the neckline right here. We see the head right here. We see the right shoulder right here. And then we saw a retest of the neckline. It struggled to break above the neckline. So where I'm looking right here is where the resistance was. This was the resistance. It struggled to break above the resistance because we didn't break above the resistance three times you know, it tapped this neckline three times, it kind of was above it a little bit, but then we saw a drop down. That was signaling that we were in a massive bear market because we could not regain the $40,000 price range, like 40,000 to $42,500, roughly around there. So what are we looking at right now? Well, we're looking at a deviation on the RSI of lower highs, whereas we see higher high, higher high, a little bit of a higher high, so the markets are losing steam. Now this right shoulder, the real question here is if this plays out, again, I could be completely wrong here. I hope I'm wrong on this, and I hope that Bitcoin breaks out. It breaks through the $30,000 price range. It, it holds it as support, and we just keep going up before the halving. And then if there's a correction near the halving, then it's above where we are for the head. But the right shoulder, if it's not already formed and we're forming the right shoulder right now, the real neckline here that we're looking at is roughly $25,000. If we break below $25,000, you 
you know, and we don't come all the way back down to 20,000 or 21,500 and we get stopped short right here. If we stop short, what I would expect to happen is something like this to take place and then Bitcoin, you know, to break above it and then go from there. And so the real question for me is how low will Bitcoin go if it breaks below $25,000? Because I think it's coming. I think something's happening. Something's going to happen for Bitcoin. So, you know, we could waddle around here for another few weeks leading into November, uh, rally up a little bit further for the right shoulder, come down, you know, see a, see a bounce or a wick off 25, waddle around for a little bit, struggle around here and maybe break out of here or waddle around here and then see another dip below 25, shake everyone out, stop short, liquidate those that are shorting the market, thinking that we're going to go lower only to break out, take everyone out and then go and rally and pass the, the high of July and keep rallying from there. But either way, having some cash on the sidelines is always a safe play. So you can back up the truck for the dip and leading into, you know, 2024, when we see the 10 year to three year to three month inverted yield curve go in the positive, And when we see unemployment spike, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts here. I mean, I'm open to a, a friendly debate here because based on what I've just shown you, all right, let's base this on logic. Did the markets crash for the stock market when the rates went from 3.5 upwards of 13%? The answer is yes. All right, we have one yes. Okay, when the, when the unemployment rate went from like four point something percent upwards of 10% by November, 2009, were the markets crashing? Yes, we have two yeses. You get where I'm going with this. From 2000 to 2003, a third yes. From 1990 to 1992, a fourth yes. Right here, 81 to 82, a fifth yes. 73 to uh, 1995, a sixth yes. A seventh yes. An eighth yes. A nine. We're nine for nine. Nine for nine right now. Now, where are we on unemployment? Biden keeps bragging about low unemployment because he knows people aren't smart enough to look at this but you're smart enough. I don't have to insult your intelligence here. You're a full grown educated crypto degenerate. Okay. Just like the rest of us, you're sharing this video with a friend so they can understand if we're nine for nine, meaning that nine, the past nine times the unemployment has spiked up. We've seen a crash in the S and P 500. We've seen a crash in the rest of the stock markets ranging anywhere from 20%, 36, 50%, 28, 20%, 50%, 58, 36. We have yet to see that spike in unemployment again. So when that spike starts to happen, that will be in the middle of the crash. So are we in the middle of the crash right now, just like 2008's dead cat bounce, and we have yet to see another dip down? I think that's what's coming. Now, I hope I'm wrong, but all the signs line up for me not to be wrong now, <laughs> right? You don't hear many people say that. Most people are going to hype you up and pump you up and say, we're going to the moon. We're going to the moon. Now, I think we will after the dip is over. So if I was a trillionaire or a hundred billionaire, I was Warren Buffett or one of these elite behind the scenes having these conference meetings, what, what would I do, right? If I, would, if I had all the power and the money in the world and you wanted to accumulate more power, now I would donate a lot of money. That's what I would do. I think that'd be amazing. But let's say you didn't have a desire to contribute to charity, to help people out, to spread positive information. Let's say you were one of them, right? What would you do? You would scare the crap out of everybody so they would sh get shaken out of their positions so you can buy up their bags and then pump the markets to the moon and make more money. That's what you would do, right? That's what they most likely wanna do. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. But when the markets crash, what I'm doing is I'm backing up my truck all the way to the bank. I'm grabbing the bags, packing them, stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because I believe that the spending power of the dollar is going to continue to go down in value. That's been a fact so far. Blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology is going up in interest. That's the truth. And together we're all going camping, you know where, on the beaches of the moon. So I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com where you'll discover our best ways to make money online without any previous trading experience. All you got to do, click the button on the page, put in your best email address, You'll be instantly subscribed to our daily newsletter. And when we launch our financial education platform, you will be notified first. If you guys want to see a list of the top altcoins that we hold for this coming bull run that we're the most bullish on, again, it doesn't mean you should buy them, just showing you guys what we hold. If you want to see that, then make sure you're subscribed. Once that's released, we'll send that to you. And as always, subscribe if you want to see more content like that, like this. 
So I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com. As always, stay bullish.